Okay. All right. Morning, everyone. Morning. What we're going to do this morning is um, we're going to start. There's uh, quite a few people not here that asked specifically about this specific topic for me to do it, and then they're not here, so I guess they can listen to it on online and uh, recap in the next week or so. But what we're going to do is um, we want to talk about the chronological order of the of Paul's epistles and when it was written during the Acts period or after the Acts period, um, looking at some evidences that we, 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 don't, well, we have, and then also we're going to look at some of the speculations and opinions we have about when it perhaps could have been written. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And, um, and uh, you know, the, some people was asking, you know, why would you want to care about what, when it was written? It's important because... Once you, uh, for, the, for the most serious student of the Scriptures, the, the one that wants to understand the Word of God, understand why Paul is saying this at this time, and when he's saying this to those people, would, this will become very helpful, okay? And so, as we're going to go through this, 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 this passage this morning, and I'm going to give you only my opinions about that and my understanding of that. I'm not saying what I'm telling you, the date, Unless I can, without a doubt, prove the date or the or the, the not the date, um, but the the timing and the the, the, the references where it, when it was written, unless I can state that and for sure show you, the the rest is going to be my opinions about it and my understanding about it. Okay, and so, but before we do that, you can turn for me to Second Timothy. So long, if you'd like. Um, we're going to have to do some considerations and. Um, and we need to understand some things before we get into looking at these various books and looking at the order of that. So this is going to be more technical this morning. It's not me preaching at you. And I'm going to have to try to keep my voice at a stable level. Otherwise, I will not be able to preach in the second message this morning. Okay, so... And if you have a question, raise your hand and, um, and um, we'll see what we can do about that. Okay? <clears throat> One of the things that we know when it comes to the considering the Scriptures is no dates is given by inspiration of God. You cannot go into the Bible and say, Paul, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, at 64 A.D. or at 53 A.D. or 54 A.D. as written to the what's name. All the dates that's out there, none of those dates were given by inspiration, okay? And, and most of the times those dates are assumed based on historical fact mentioned in Scripture, measured against another Scripture, event, or an extra-biblical recorded history that dates gets placed. So when you go find timelines of dates, you're going to see 54 AD, 53 AD, but in those dates, you do, various scholars, as you study these dates and when books were written, you're going to find out that they're never consistent. They always, always within three or four years of one another, but they're never consistent. You, so you, do, do not rely on the date. Do not rely because a date is not given by inspiration of God. Now, sometimes you can assume a date because if it says in the reign of Caesar Augustus or whatever, then you know, okay, he reigned in that time, and, and you know, then you can try and figure out a date from there, looking at history, etc., etc. Okay, but there's no scriptural in, inspiration of dates. And if the Bible doesn't inspire the specific dates, why would I want to spend my time arguing about what date it was, 63 or 64 or 52 or 53? Why would I want to, <laughs> you know, argue about that? What was given by inspiration is more important than when it was written. Okay? Because the Scripture stays stable. It's always going to be there, you know? When you read, a, you, you open up a passage and you read Second Timothy or you read um, Colossians chapter 4 and you open, you start reading, you don't stop and say, okay, what's the date of this passage so that I can figure out if it, no, you know, no. What was written is more important from when it was written, okay? But with Paul's epistles, we also do remember that when it was written, it was written when Paul, when God gives Paul specific revelation concerning the, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. That information Paul writes down. And so now we know for a fact now that Romans to Philemon is specifically written to the body of Christ. Arguing about 53 AD to 64 AD is not going to 
change that fact. It's Pauline's epistle. And God, for a specific reason, did not place the Pauline epistles from Romans to Philemon in chronological order, in date order, or in timing order. He, he set it up in a doctrinal order for the edification of the body of Christ. It's important that we understand that, okay? And we might look into that some, sometime later, okay? Mostly what we will do is we will mostly specul about, speculate about, as I said earlier, about the time and the order of the writing of the epistle against events, against people or places that Paul or other writers mention in Scripture. We'll just, we'll, if we have a timing, it's based on, it's a speculation, because this person is with Timothy, but that person is not with Timothy. That conclude it had to happen, it can't happen in Acts 20, because that person was not with, with Paul in Acts 20, but he was, with Acts, he, was with, he was with Paul in Acts 19, and if he was Paul in Acts 19 and he's mentioned in his epistle, then it means he was with Paul when Paul wrote it. If he, if he writes... If he writes, that guy's name is not in there, like Sylphanus, then you know it's written after Acts 19, it has to be Acts 20. You went, because Timothy is with him, but Sylphanus is now not with him anymore. So <clears throat> it becomes very, it's more serious study, okay? And it just, I might have a bit of more than what I can chew here this morning, you know. And so, but it's in, just take the notes in, and I'll be happy to share all my notes with you guys here. However, what we need to consider with that said, is X also X does not record all the history of Paul of all of Paul's travel history. X doesn't record all of it. There's places that Paul we know that the gospel went out to and, and, the, and the, uh, Paul visited, but that's not recorded when he does so in the book of Acts. And, only, and we only have in the book we know he wants to go to Spain, but X never tells you was it Spain. He never went to north, northeast of no, northwest of um, of Macedonia. It's never recorded that he went out there, but we know he was there because there's proof in Scripture that he was up there. So it that had to happen some other time in between or post act, possibly, that he's done to these places. Okay, and so we're going to look at these scriptures. Okay. We do not have Paul's post-Acts travels. And Paul did travel after Acts, at the end of Acts 28. You know? And um, with that said, you know, what we see Paul, he will also visit certain places more than one time. Like the Corinthians. He talks about the Corinthians. I'm going to come to you a third time. Now, where's the, where's the evidence of the other times he was there? We got maybe twice. But where's the third time, the evidence of that he was there? Where's the evidence, you know, and, and so those things. But, you know, <clears throat> he visits these places several times. And, and the timing of the visit, uh, visits need to be considered unless spe specifically stated. Because as he's, if he writes in a book like Corinthians, um, these guys in Macedonia, which time it was it was in Macedonia? The first time he went to Macedonia in the second missionary journey and the, or the, the second apostolic journey? Or was it the third apostolic journey that he was in Macedonia? Or was there another time that he was in Macedonia? You just don't know. So when it comes to the, putting these books in a chronological order, it's going to be not that straightforward. Okay? You can own, we can have opinions and we can speculate about that. So that's with that said, there's a majority of the timing of Paul's epistles are not clear. And for that reason, is what Paul wrote down for the body of Christ that's more important than the timing. Okay? That, it, it's important that we understand that. And some are clearer than others, and we'll see that from the chart and as we go through these books. Some, some events, like Paul went through, some events happens more than once, like prisons and beatings. Paul wasn't, you know, we know what Paul was in prison. But if you carefully look at the Scripture, you're going to come to the conclusion Paul was in prison. Then he was set at liberty, and then he's back in prison. And Second Timothy is his last imprisonment. He's ready to die, but he was in prison before that. In the first Timothy, and Titus was written when Paul was at liberty. That tells me that he was set at liberty after the first imprisonment, between Acts 24 and Acts 28. He was set at liberty after that for a period and then prisoned again. You guys follow what I'm saying? 
Okay. And so <clears throat> some laborers with Paul, as, as mentioned, you know, with Paul several times, but they also with Paul at several visits. Timothy is sometimes with Paul, but sometimes he's not with Paul. Silphanus. Silas is with Paul at some time, but he's not with Paul at other times, you know. And so maybe Timothy is with Paul at Ephesus, or he's sent to Ephesus, or he's maybe with Paul once or twice, but then another place, another book is written, he's not with Paul again. So you, it's, you, you just have to just have to try and figure out those dates, or not the dates, but the timing of those. And the history of Paul is not complete. The history of Paul is not complete. Whatever, however, what we have is what God is by inspiration and preservation has given us that we need. Paul's history, what Paul has done in the Scripture, is just as, you know, you look at the Lord Jesus Christ and His ministry on earth, starting from Matthew to, Matthew to the book of John. In the book of John, he says, all these things could not, con the books of the world cannot contain all these things that he did. So everything Christ did was not recorded. In the same way, everything that Paul did was not recorded. All his healings and all his non-healings and all, all that stuff, none of that, not, not none of that, but a lot of that stuff is not recorded. And his, his visit to places like Spain, um, was he at Rome at one time and then went away and then went back to Rome again, you know? Um, he's, he's, and, and so all those things are not recorded, but we come to the conclusion based on Scripture that they must have been at those places more than once. Okay, And so we know that every book in the Bible, God has given to us by inspiration of God, and it's preserved for us by God through the church, the body of Christ. Okay, And for eternity, God has done that. Look at me at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Well, let's go read from verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So one of the things that we know about when Paul writes it, beyond the issue of the timing, is that the Scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And what Scripture? All of Scripture. When he says all of Scripture here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, he's not saying only all of Paul's scripture, of Paul's epistles, Romans to Philemon. He's meaning all scripture from Genesis to Revelation was given by inspiration of God. Okay? Everything is given by inspiration of God and it's preserved for us. And what we'll find here is, we, and, and you know, the book of Psalms chapter 12 talks about, he said, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, talking about his word. God will preserve his word forever. What we find out, as we'll see as we look at Paul's epistles, Paul sometimes, there's evidence that Paul wrote an epistle like to the Hebrews, and his letter to written to you. But that epistle is not in the Scriptures. And the reason it's not in Scripture, because God didn't count it as Holy Scripture, as inspired Word, to be preserved for us in the Bible. Paul wrote many epistles. We're going to start looking at these epistles, and it seems to me that Paul only really starts writing after Acts 18. He starts writing after Acts 18, but does that mean he didn't write before that? No, I think he wrote before that, you know, and it's just not those, but what he wrote to the people that he visited, because that's naturally what you're going to do in those days. If I visited with you today, I get home after spending two or three days with you and teaching you the Bible, what will I do? I will send you a text message. Or an email stating, hey, it was great spending this time with you. And, you know, just remember what I said about this. Remember to look at this. I'm sure Paul wrote more than one epistle, more than 13 epistles that he wrote to the, writes to the churches. But those are not counted as word of God. God has not put him there in by preservation. And it's clear that Paul did write more than one. You guys, so that's a little bit of a background to what we're going to do. Okay, you guys get that? Now. 
what we want to do now is start looking <coughs> at the order of these epistles and I'm going to tell you this up front this is the order as I see it I have no desire to argue it with you I have no desire to to strive with you about the timing of the epistle if you see it different that's fine okay if also if you see something I I've I've excluded and not thought about mentioning when we're talking about this bring it up to me so that I can have a look at it okay but this is how I see the order okay and so let's look at that and start look at that um, that consideration so obviously first of all Paul wrote pre-prison epistles epistles that is and again let me say this to you if you want the notes I'll email you my notes no problem but you're gonna have to email me and ask me for the notes okay Paul writes um, the we have the pre-prison epistles before we know that he's talking about you know because when he writes Ephesians and Philippians he talks about in the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ in bonds you know the household of Caesar and all these things he's mentioning all these things so we know he's in prison but these epistles he was not in prison although he was in jail once or twice he wasn't in prison okay and so um, so the order that I see it in the pre-prison epistles and the first one's gonna be a shocker okay and that's where the biggest debates gonna happen okay anybody have an idea what I'm gonna say is the first one not all at once Galatians okay now a lot of people if you start looking um, um, at these epistles a lot of people put Galatians later after first and second Thessalonians you know we normally say and if you hear me if you recall what I say always I always say to you Galatians and Thessalonians we're not sure which one was written first but they were the first ones that's been written okay and so which ones is it uh, so I put Galatians up front there and I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I think so as we're gonna go through the book of Galatians and um, and you look at that if you see if, if the notes that I have up there by the way we're gonna go over these references again in detail as we look at each one of these books Acts 15 41 to 16 6 we know Paul visits these churches of Galatia again okay Acts um, 18 he visits those churches again and Acts 19 he goes through that area again okay we know that this epistles that Paul wrote to the Galatians had to be written after Paul visits those churches I do think for the fact as we're gonna look at Galatians just now that it was definitely written after Acts 15 the book of Galatians and the reason why would you what would you think the reason would be that I would say that Galatians was written after Acts 15 what happens in Acts 15 that Paul also describes in Galatians the what he sees the apostles concerning the law and circumcision and all those things right and he has that he has that meeting with them and the declaring what God has given him that happens in Acts 15 and he discussed that same meetings of Acts 15 in Galatians 2 which he writes about in Galatians 2 so I think Galatians was definitely written after this meetings otherwise he could not have mentioned that you know it couldn't be written in 13 and 14 it had to be written after 15 okay when he writes his epistles to them and uh, and I think it's gonna be soon after the Jerusalem Council after the Jerusalem meetings it's gonna be soon after that soon after Acts 15 and I will tell you why I say so okay so you see I, I wrote up down there the time of the writing is what unclear you have to you cannot you cannot point to a verse and see that he writes it there yep that he writes it there you cannot do that with Galatians okay number two the second one that I've said was written after Galatians was obviously without a doubt first Thessalonians and it is clear that he wrote first the last Thessalonians and I'm going to show you why I say so but it's clear that he wrote it during Acts chapter 18 between chapter 5 and 18 and most probably verse 11 okay why when he writes that Acts chapter 18 which then obviously shortly after that Paul writes 2nd Thessalonians 
which is the same people that he mentions in 1 Thessalonians, he mentions the same people in 2 Thessalonians. And um, I will, we will look at that also through that. What do you think is written after Galatians and 1 and 2 Thessalonians? What do you think is the next book? Anybody got an idea? Corinthians. That's right. So 1 Corinthians is written during Acts chapter 19 and before Acts chapter 20 verses 1 to 4. You had to be written in Acts, I mean, and we'll show you, or, or, or before Acts 20 verse 4, let me put it this way, Acts 20 verse 4. 1 Corinthians, and it's clear, I'll show you why I say that from the scriptures that proves that. Then the next one is obviously following that shortly, is 2 Corinthians, or maybe not so shortly, but some time has passed, that he writes 2 Corinthians. Because the way that we connect First and Second Corinthians, because of this, is obviously the people that he's writing, where he's writing from, but also there's a guy that committed a sin in First Corinthians that was rebuked, and he repented and came back, and he's writing about that same guy in Second Corinthians again. So it tells me that it had to follow shortly after. So we'll we'll look at the at the at the um, you know, but the timing again of that is not very clear. Now. After First and Second Corinthians, what's the next book if it was a pre-prison epistle that he doesn't mention prison in? You, so you have Galatians, you have First and Second Thessalonians, you have First and Second Corinthians. What's the next one? Paul was not in prison in this as one. He doesn't talk about a prison of the Lord Jesus Christ. What? Romans, the book of Romans, the book of Romans, <clears throat> and the book of Romans, and the time of the writing is actually very clear when he wrote Romans, and that's in Acts chapter 20, verses between two, verses um, 2 and 3, before 4, and I'm going to show you why we say that, because the scriptures give you evidence, that is one of the books that you can prove, okay, and then, then we have, the next set of what we have is the prison epistles. Now, who can mention to me some of the prison epistles that Paul was in prison? Mention to me a, an epistle that Paul was in prison. Not all at once. Come, Tim, one of them. What? Timothy? Second Timothy or First Timothy? Um, no. Second Timothy. He was in prison, but this is this is the first imprisonment here. Paul was in Second Timothy was written during the second imprisonment. But I asked you the question when he was in prison, so you asked it right, correctly. What other epistles were Paul writing? This is a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ in bonds. Come on, Robert, you should know that. Ephesians. Which other one? Philippians. Yes. Which other one? Colossians. Yes. And which other one is hand in hand with Colossians? Philemon. So Philemon, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philippians are written and the prison epistles. Because it's clear in those letters as you read it that Paul is in bonds, he's a prisoner, etc. Philemon and Colossians are written <coughs> excuse me. Are written during the same time. Okay? And I think Philemon has to precede. Colossians by just a little bit because before Anes An An Anesimus could he had to deliver a letter before it goes to the Philippians Philemon had to get Onesimus first and um, we'll talk about that but Philemon is a prison epistle and that here's the thing is now about that it could have been written any time between Acts 24 and Acts 28 it had to be written any between, any, anywhere in between there. Although Paul, Paul had a guard with him in 24, but he was, kept, he was kept in prison, okay? Then the journey starts, then the journey starts to Rome from there onwards in on, on the book of Acts 24. Now one of the things that you're gonna, which, which you're going to learn as you study this stuff is that you have to have a good grasp of what is going on in the book of Acts. 
as you see Paul's journeys, as his apostolic journeys, the first one and the second one and the third one, those all happened by, by Acts 20. Okay? Then from onward there, from 21 onwards, or, you know, or from, you know, we have Paul going to Jerusalem. That's a, not an apostolic journey, but it's a, it's a, it's a Jerusalem journey. And then he gets captive, and then is his journey to go to Rome, to the end of the book. And that takes several chapters from 24 to, to, to 28. It's all about Paul's journey to Rome and what happens and all the, the questionnaires at Caesarea where he was kept captive for two years. And, you know, where he was by, by Felix and by all these guys, you know, where he then appeals to Caesar. And where will Caesar be? In Rome. Okay, and so Philemon, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philippians are written a prison epistle, and the only one of those that is clear about the timing, which is Acts 28, is the book of Philippians. Only the book of Philippians is clear about Acts 28, but Philemon, Colossians, and, and Ephesians is not that clear. It could have happened anywhere from 24 to 28. And I'll give you my speculation about when it was written, but I'm just giving you the broad brush strokes here right now. Okay, so then after these prison epistles, it is clear or it is assumed, not so clear, but it's assumed. And you know what you get when you assume things, right? You never get the right thing. But, but it's assumed that Paul was set at liberty for a short period. And in this liberty time that he had for a short period, he did some travels. And these two books clearly tell you he's not in prison, but he's at liberty. He's talking about, I'm coming to see you. You know, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, so he knows he's coming. He's not saying, I hope to. He knows he's coming, okay? And so Titus, which is Paul at liberty, Titus and First Timothy, is we seem to be having Paul at liberty. And I'll show you why I say so as we look at these scriptures you guys with me is this boring yes. not boring okay he was in house arrest but he was an arrest don't remember don't forget that he can't just come and go like he wants to he had a soldier with him at a house and anybody could visit him as much as they want to acts 24 they could visit him anytime they want but, and, 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 and Felix said, you know, just anybody can, don't disallow anybody to come and see him. You'll see that in Acts 24. And we'll talk about that. <clears throat> and then obviously the last one is 2 Timothy. It's the last one because we know now for a fact, Paul is in prison. We know for a fact he's going to die soon. We know he's in Rome. So without a fact, we know that has to be the, if he was at liberty in between, now he's in prison in Rome. Okay, we call it the second imprisonment. Okay, maybe he was set out on bail for at liberty for a time, but he had to still had to come back and, and face trial with Caesar, etc., in Rome. That's Second Timothy. And so, when, when do you think Paul wrote the book of Hebrews in between these? When did he write the book of Hebrews? He didn't write the book of Hebrews, okay. <laughs> All right, that's just that's a trick question, okay? All right, anybody got an idea who wrote the book of Hebrews? Anybody got a, huh? God, you're sure, we know God. God wrote all the books of the Bible. He wrote every one of them. But who wrote the book of Hebrews, you think? Anybody done a study on that? Come, Jeanette, huh? Possibly Mark. Which Mark? John Mark, okay. Huh? Who? Lazarus. Oh, okay, yes, 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 I've heard Lazarus. Barnabas. Barnabas, okay. It could have been any one of those guys, okay. You want my opinion? No, he doesn't want my opinion. He shaked his head, he doesn't want my opinion, so I'm not going to give it then. <coughs> No, I'm not giving it. So, well, yeah, a guy shake his head at me. I'm like, okay, forget about it. Then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like real, you know. No. <clears throat> he doesn't want to hear my opinion. He just wants to hear the facts. I know what he wants. 
No, I think John Mark wrote it. You know, it's my opinion. But um, John Mark, Barnabas' sister, sister's son to John, to, to Barnabas' sister's son, John Mark. But that's just, <clears throat> again, that's a deductive from a bunch of studies and stuff and things like that. So, I'm, if you say to me, no, Barnabas wrote it, or you say to me, <clears throat> so-and-so wrote it, I'm not going to, it's, it's not an issue to me. Unless it states there, if, unless it says there, Paul, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, unto the church at Corinth, or at a church, then if it doesn't say that, then okay. And by the way, did Paul write all of his epistles, all 13? That's a trick question. Did Paul write all 13 epistles? It's a trick question. No. But did Paul give every 30, uh, 13 epistle? Yes. He dictated and it was written. Tertius and all these guys, Tertius guys writing the information down. And he, did he sign all of his epistles? Yes, he signed all of his epistles with his own hand. Okay, as his manner is, says the Bible. <coughs> so, what we're now going to do is, <coughs> we're going to come into Galatians, but I think we're going to cut it short here as I'm going to start looking at the book of Galatians. Um, I'll give you a, a quick preview of what we're going to do through these books and you see how we're going to handle them. Remember I said Galatians was written at, the first time, at, at first, and so we'll give you a quick preview and I'll start over here again the next time. Okay? So there are many opinions about when Paul wrote Galatians. You know, some place it before Thessalonians and some after Thessalonians. The time of writing is the fact that the time of the writing of Galatians is not clear. If I look at my Bible, and I look at the end of my Bible, at the book of Galatians, every book of my, in, in every one of my, in, in every, one of, every book that Paul writes here, all the scriptures, my Bible has an, uh, a little insert there, not by inspiration, but it says, it tells me who wrote it, and, um, or it tells me um, where it was written from. And Galatians, in my Bible, says, unto the Galatians written from Rome which placed the date of the book of Galatians way back where? At the end of Acts. Okay? But uh, we know that is not the case. Okay? If you look at, now your final authority of the world today, Wikipedia, the world's final authority, Wikipedia says it was written from Ephesus around about 53 to 54 A.D., which places you in Acts 19. Okay? Which possibly could not be far off either. Okay? But here's what we know. I'm going to tell you what we know about the timing of the writing. Okay? We know that it was written after Acts 15, after the Jerusalem meeting, because Paul talk, talks about, and if you look at the book of Galatians, chapter 2, He's talking about with Barnabas and Titus going up to by revelation to Jerusalem. He's going to meet with the brethren there. He's going to meet with the apostles, with the elders of Jerusalem. By the way, when I say apostles and elders, what do I mean? The church in Jerusalem was overseen by the twelve apostles, and the local church in Jerusalem was overseen by the elders, which was James. Remember, James was not an apostle, but he was an elder, overseeing elder of the church of Jerusalem. When we look at the book of Acts, Remember, we looked through that information, okay? And so, <clears throat> so he's writing to this church, and it gives you this account in Galatians chapter 2, which we also read about in Acts chapter 15 with the Jerusalem Council. So that tells me this letter had to be written after Acts 15, or at the end of 15 at least, okay? And so that's what I know, for, for, what I know for a fact. Also, what we do know is, is one of, it's one of the first epistles written by Paul. And the reason why we say so, if you look at Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6 is, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So when was Paul, when was Paul in Galatia, gave them the gospel, established the churches in Galatia, when did that take place? When did he travel through Galatia? Acts chapter 13 and chapter 14. 
Chapter 14, when he goes back through there, he turns back and goes back again. He, in cha- and, and that's in his first apostolic journey, he established the churches in chapter 14. That's when he was stoned as well in chapter 14. He got stoned and dragged out the city. Okay? So we, we know that for a fact. And so if he's soon removed after his first apostolic journey, establishing the churches... Would it be strange for me to think if Paul says you are so soon removed? Would he say that 15 years later? Or would he say it very soon after? It seems to me he would rather say it sooner after that they remove from him. And to another gospel. The information he gives in the book of Galatians is not the advanced doctrine that we have in Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians. What we have in Galatians is the, is, the, is the information that he's teaching in Galatians is very based on the book of Romans, which is what Paul started preaching. As Paul was getting progressive revelation as he was traveling, he was writing that progressive revelation down towards the end of the book of Acts. That, but the foundational doctrine is Romans. And Galatians has departed from the foundational doctrine, which is the book of Romans. And that's why he's... That's why I say it had to be written written early rather than later. Okay. Also, what we've seen there, so soon remove, so it could be Acts 16, it could be, you know, like I said earlier to you, except um, chapter 16, chapter 18, and um, chapter 19. But I think it's possibly earlier, if, if you ask me my opinion about that, okay. Not that Tim would ask me my opinion, but for those that do ask me my opinion about that, okay? The doctrinal content is built on the foundational doctrine that Romans lays out, okay? Now look at chapter 6 of Galatians. <clears throat> look at chapter 6. Chapter 6 and verse 17. He says, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He bears in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So in the time that Paul write that, what does he have in his body? The marks. What marks? Beaten. He was, he was whipped. In chapter 16, remember when he was at Philippi? In chapter 16 at Philippi, the governor, the, 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 the council of the city told the jailer to do what? To beat him and throw him into, into prison. So what do you have? What do you have marks? Because when, the, when that Philippian jailer got saved, Right that night when the, when, the, when the foundation was shaken of the prison, when he got saved, what did he do? He washes Paul's what? Stripes. Which means when they beat him, they laid stripes on him. He has marks on him. 1623 is what everybody gives for the timing of Galatians. Not everybody, but a lot of people give for Galatians 23. However, however, let me ask you this. When he was in Acts chapter 14, stoned and left for dead, do you think he would, that would leave marks in his body? Now, they, sto- they throw, throw stuff at Christ too, and they flocked him with the marks of the Lord Jesus. What he's saying, the marks of the Lord Jesus, you know, is that laying stripes on him, or is it just saying he's suffering, he was being beaten, he's been thrown with rocks? You know, what is, what is those... Marks of the Lord Jesus. Okay, he says, I bear my, the marks of the Lord Jesus. And so if it was stripes, it has to be Acts chapter 16. If it could be anything that is a physical, you know, because Christ had, must have marks on his hands and his, and his feet. This is the marks the scripture talks about. He didn't have that. So that tells me the Galatians have to be written earlier rather than later. Okay. Then also, it is possible without a doubt I'm not saying it's not possible, but that's why I put it in earlier. He could have written Acts around, around uh, uh, the book of Galatians, around the, book, around the time he wrote the book of Romans, because of the similar doctrine that has been discussed. And that's Acts chapter 20. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> which will place it then after Thessalonians. Okay? 
but we're not sure. We can't say without a doubt, okay? But we know it has to be placed after Paul visits those areas. And we know he visited those areas in Acts chapter 15, verse 41 to 16, verse 6. Because when he now, remember when he was at the Jerusalem council in Acts 15, he's meeting with the council, him and Barnabas has a disagreement. Barnabas takes John Mark and he goes to Cyprus. And then Paul grabs one of the other, um, which is now an apostle too, that, that, came up to, uh, that, that came up with him up to Antioch, which was who? Silas. He grabs Silas, and him with Silas is now, and they go, in, in the end of chapter 15, they go visit, in the beginning of chapter 16, they go visit those churches in Galatia again. So that's end of 15, beginning 16. Then he goes through there too in Acts chapter 18 and Acts to chapter 19. So it had to be written after any one of those times that he's been visiting with, with them. So that's, that's the type of approach that we will go um, look at this and see what type of conclusions. We can only, like I said, a lot of times we're going to have to speculate about what the timing is. We can't concrete, you, don't, you, can, only, you can only argue about a doctrine when it's laid up in there and written down there and without a doubt show it to you. Otherwise, you can't argue about it. You have an opinion about it, and you have a speculation about it, but that's about it. And you assume it based on the facts that you have. But even that is sometimes dangerous, especially if you have to assume based on the fact that he visited Macedonia many times, at least three times. The fact that he visited Corinth, he's going to come to them a third time again, you know. The fact that he goes to the churches of Galatia three times. More than three times, actually. So you have to keep all that, in, you know, in mind. All right? Any questions or any um, add-ons or anything you guys want to say about that? I know this is a, like I said, it's a little technical, this stuff now. It's like, it will be like, a, you know, you're not, it's not like a nice preaching session, you know. So, good. All right, we'll carry on with this next time. <laughs>